Welcome back, Zed here, and today we'll be looking at 10 Elden Ring tips for new players. Elden Ring is big and complex, and for new players this can be a little daunting. However, I'm confident we can overcome this using some of the simple tips we'll be going through. So without further ado, let's dive in. Number 1. Starting item. When creating your character, you're allowed to choose amongst other things, a keepsake, or in other words, a special starting item. My recommendation for new players is to grab the golden seed. In Elden Ring, you can heal or recover mana by consuming flasks, which refill at resting spots. Unfortunately, the number of uses is limited. Say hello to golden seeds. At a resting spot, golden seeds allow you to increase the maximum number of uses your flask has, which is most welcomed early on. You will also find golden seeds across the map under golden glowing trees. Number 2. Equipment Load When managing your equipment, keep an eye on your load status, shown here. This determines how fast you can move, as well as dodge. This is calculated as a ratio between what your current and max equipment load are. For new players, regardless of the starting class you've chosen, try and keep your current load between the 30 to 70% of your max load, which will allow you to at least move and roll in a normal fashion. Number 3. Rolling. Rolling is a key survival mechanic in this game, since during parts of the roll animation, you are invulnerable to damage. Thus, it's extremely useful to avoid being hit by attacks or spells, etc. Especially in situations where you know just holding your shield up won't be enough. Number 4. Guard Counters Being new to this type of game, it's common to not parry enemy attacks and instead hold your shield up to block incoming attacks, following them up with attacks when you find a window of opportunity. If you're holding the block command L1 or left shoulder button and receive an attack, if you press R2 or right trigger for a strong attack after their attack lands, you will carry out what is called a guard counter. Whilst one learns how to parry, guard counters are extremely useful in helping you get damage out to them whilst guarding yourself. Number 5. The dual wielding weapons. Most weapons can be either one or two handed. In order to dual wield, Hold Y or Triangle and press right shoulder button or R1 to dual wield your right hand weapon and left shoulder button or L1 for your left hand weapon. Note this also applies to shields. Oh and by the way, if you find this content useful feel free to subscribe and leave a like but without further ado let's move on to number 6. Breaking an enemy's stance. Most enemies have an invisible stance meter, which when broken provides a window of opportunity to deal additional damage to them. Once you have broken their stance with repeated attacks, you will hear a noticeable audio cue to indicate the enemy is vulnerable. Approach the glowing indicator during this short window and attack them with R1 or right shoulder button for additional damage. Tip number 7. Pouch Menu there will be items or spells you will use frequently in combat apart from your healing pot. However, you may not want to clutter up your quick item menu in combat as it can be difficult to find your healing pot in the middle of a fight. Here you have two options. Hold the down arrow on your d-pad. This will reset your item selection to your first item which typically is the healing flask. Or you can place other spells or items on your pouch menu. This is found on the top right side of the start menu and once you set up items here, they can be accessed by holding Y or triangle. You will notice that your quick menu changes to display your pouch menu and then from here select the desired item using the d-pad. Number 8. Poison. You will come across areas where you will gradually accumulate a type of poison until you leave the areas. If you stand in the poisoned area for too long, the poison buildup will complete and you will receive a particular penalty, for example suffering health loss over time. It is common for us to naturally try and jump, run or roll through these poisoned areas and although some of these movements are useful, it must be said rolling is in fact bad as you end up covering yourself in poison and thus the poison buildup occurs faster and lasts longer. Number 9. Stealth and Backstab 
you're able to carry out stealth attacks by crouching with L3 and walking up to enemies from behind for a backstab with R1 or right shoulder button. Don't underestimate their value when attempting to clear out mobs. And last but not least, number 10, Ladder Interactions. Whilst you climb or descend ladders, you can attack above or below you with R1 or right shoulder button to attack upwards and R2 or right trigger to attack downwards. You can also consume items whilst on the ladder and you may also jump off the ladder by pressing B or circle twice. And there you have it. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please leave a like and if you have any questions, please drop them down on the comments below, I'd be happy to help.